So Kennedy, today we're going to talk about tax yields. Okay. Okay. Another word for tax yields is tax liens. That's what a lot of people uh, refer to them as. But with tax liens or uh, tax yields, pretty much what happens is if a person doesn't pay their property taxes, then the government can put a lien on the property. Okay. So if they ever try to sell that property, then that lien is going to pop up and they have to address that first. So let's say that Ms. Johnson, for an example, she didn't pay her property tax. And remember the property tax, even if your house is paid for, you still have to pay your property tax, right? So if you don't pay the property tax, then the property tax, I mean, uh, the tax lien is assessed on the property. So here's what happens. The county needs your property tax to be able to take care of things, okay? Do you know what, what taxes, what, what are some of the things taxes take care of? Just take care of schools, roads, trash men, mm -hmm. um, police department, certain things like that. Yeah, fire, EMT, uh, parks and recreation, all kind of cool stuff, right? Yeah. So it's important that counties collect taxes so they can take care of that kind of stuff, right? So I'm looking out the street now, I see a trash uh, truck running down the street now. So the government looks at investors as a bailout. It kind of helps them in the situation because as investors, we're able to purchase property taxes, right? Or tax liens. So what happens, Kennedy, when you get a tax lien in Georgia, the person has 366 days to redeem. It's called the redemption period. So they have one year and one day to pay back the property tax. But the cool thing here in Georgia is there's a 20% interest that they have to pay. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Because we know the banks don't pay that kind of money. Uh, the banks pay like maybe 0.01% interest. So now we're talking about 20% interest. So let's suppose that someone's property tax was, let's say, $3,000, Kennedy. 20% of that would be $300 that they would have to pay. So if you bought the tax lien with your capital investment company that you own, you would be able to purchase that tax lien for $3,000, right? 20% is 300, so they have 366 days to pay you back the $3,000 plus the $300. So, if they did pay you back, that's great because you got a 20% return on your investment on ROI. However, if they don't pay you back within that 366 days, what happens? I own the house. That's right. You just got a brand new house or a house at least for $3,000. So that house could be worth four hundred, five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars. But if the taxes owed was three thousand and they didn't uh, pay that tax, then guess what? Like you just said, you're able to get the house for the three thousand dollars or whatever that tax lien would be for. And typically, Kennedy, a lot of times if people fall behind on their property taxes after one year, chances are great that they probably won't pay it for the second year. Okay. So sometimes you can even pay someone's property tax up two, three years in advance. So if they got in that kind of situation financially, chances are very odd uh, and chances just aren't great that they're going to be able to pay that loan back off. Okay. So you asked me another question too about what was it? Foreclosure, I think. Okay, you want to know the difference between a foreclosure and eviction. Well, foreclosure is the process of being evicted, okay? So if a person doesn't pay their mortgage, today's the first one example. So if people didn't pay their mortgage and 30 days went by, here in Georgia, you have 30 days and then you can start the foreclosure process. So what that does is it starts the process of bringing your whole mortgage note due at one time. And if you can't pay that off, then they start the foreclosure process and then you begin to take your home from it. So, when you go to closings, a lot of times you hear the attorneys make a joke about it when they say, if you don't pay, you don't stay. So um, the foreclosure process starts. The eviction is the action taken after the foreclosure is executed and the time limit is up. So that's when the marshal's department will come in and physically put people out of their home. So sometimes you may drive by and you see a lot of furniture or boxes and stuff like that in people's driveways. That's a very huge indication that they have been uh, foreclosed on, okay? Okay. So that's the difference between what uh, an eviction and foreclosure is. Foreclosure is the process, the eviction is the action that they take. Okay? Okay. So 
So, you got some good information for the day? Yeah. All right. Well, guys, I'm Dr. Sean J. Harris, and this is my girl, Kennedy, with K-Lock uh, Products. So, one of the things we always do, guys, is we always teach the kids about finances. You can't build generational wealth without financial literacy. So, until next time, guys, always remember, time is running out to achieve your goals. So, let's